The tibia is a medial bone of the leg. It is a long bone that consists of a proximal extremity, shaft, and distal extremity. The proximal extremity contains five surfaces and two expanded eminences called condyles. This is a superior surface, the anterior, medial, posterior, and lateral. This expansion right here is called a medial condyle and this right here is a lateral condyle. This is a right tibia. The superior surface is known as a tibial plateau. The tibial plateau consists of two facets. The medial facet is egg-shaped or oval-shaped and the lateral facet is circular. Each facet is concave and contains a meniscus. The menisci sit at the periphery of the facet. They do not cover the entire articular facet. The femoral condyles articulate with the centers of each facet. This right here is the intercondylar eminence, also known as the spine of the tibia. This bump is a medial intercondylar tubercle, and this bump right here is a lateral intercondylar tubercle. This area right here is the anterior intercondylar fossa, and this area is a posterior intercondylar fossa. The anterior surface contains a tibial tuberosity, which is the insertion of ligamentum patelli. The tubercle on the lateral condyle is Gerdes tubercle. This is where the iliotibial tract inserts. On the posterior surface, on the medial side of the medial condyle, there is a transverse groove that serves as the attachment of the semimembranosus tendon. The lateral surface articulates with the head of the fibula. This facet is called the fibular articular facet. The shaft of the tibia consists of three borders and three surfaces. This is the anterior border, sometimes called the anterior crest. This is the medial border. And this is the lateral border, also called the interosseous border. This is the medial surface. The lateral surface. And right here is the posterior surface. The anterior border begins proximally at the tibial tuberosity and ends distally at the anterior border of the medial malleolus. The medial border begins proximally at the medial condyle and ends distally at the posterior border of the medial malleolus. And the lateral border begins proximally at the fibular facet and ends by bifurcating. This bifurcation forms the borders of the fibular notch in the distal extremity. The lateral border serves as the attachment of the interosseous membrane. The medial surface is bounded by the anterior and medial borders. At the superior aspect, the tendons of gracilis, sartorius, and semitendinosus insert together as a pes anserinus. The lateral surface is bounded by the anterior and lateral borders. The tibialis anterior originates from the upper two-thirds of the lateral surface. The posterior surface is bounded by the medial and lateral borders. The soleo or popliteal line extends obliquely from just behind the fibular facet to the upper portion of the posterior surface. This triangular area above the line is the origin of the popliteus muscle. The vertical ridge extends distally from the middle of the soleal line to the middle portion of the shaft, dividing this region of the posterior surface into a medial and lateral portion. The flexor digitorum longus originates medial to the vertical ridge. The tibialis posterior takes part of its origin lateral to the vertical ridge. A nutrient foramen is found distal to the popliteal line. 
The distal extremity of the tibia consists of five surfaces, the anterior, medial, posterior, lateral, and inferior. The posterior surface contains a groove that allows passage for the tendon of flexor hallucis longus. A possible board's question you may be asked is to describe the course of the FHL tendon. It travels through the groove at the posterior surface of the distal extremity of the tibia and is covered by the flexor retinaculum. Next, it passes through the groove formed by the medial and lateral tubercles at the posterior surface of the body of the talus. Then it travels through the groove found at the inferior aspect of the sustentaculum tali. It continues by coursing through the second layer of plantar muscles and is found in the medial muscular compartment. It then passes through the medial and lateral sesamoids and inserts into the distal phalanx of the hallux. The lateral surface contains the fibular notch. The boundaries of the fibular notch are formed by the bifurcation of the lateral border of the shaft. The fibular shaft articulates with the inferior portion of the notch and the interosseous tibiofibular ligament attaches to the superior portion. There are two tubercles located at the inferior aspect of the borders. The tubercle found at the distal end of the anterior border is called a tubercle of Talo or Chaput. The tubercle found at the distal end of the posterior border is called a posterior malleolus or third malleolus. The inferior surface is also known as a tibial play fond. It articulates with the trochlear surface of the body of the talus. This articulation is part of the ankle mortis or malleolar fork which helps form the ankle joint. The medial malleolus is an inferior projection of the medial surface of the distal extremity. The medial malleolus consists of two surfaces, two borders, and an apex. This is the medial surface. This is the lateral surface. Here is the anterior border. Here is the posterior border. And this region is the apex. The lateral surface articulates with the medial surface of the body of the talus. The lateral surface of the medial malleolus is also part of the ankle mortis. The tibial play fond and the lateral surface are continuous, meaning this entire region is covered by hyaline cartilage and forms part of the ankle joint. The posterior border contains the medial malleolar sulcus, which allows passage for the tendons of tibialis posterior and flexor digitorum longus. The apex consists of an anterior and posterior colliculus, and these are separated by an intercollicular groove. The anterior colliculus is much larger and extends further inferior. The medial deltoid ligaments of the ankle joint attach to the apex.